uh, hello everyone and thanks for the introduction. I hope you hear me well because I'm really joining from East Africa. It's past midnight here and I found a really nice location here by the pool where you hopefully cannot hear the party. So yeah, with that, let's uh, start with discussing how do we scale Filecoin. So this is the work that we're doing uh, inside the Consensus Lab, which didn't exist uh, basically when Filecoin was launched the last year and Filecoin Orbit is celebrating one year of Filecoin launch. So let me introduce uh, just briefly what Consensus Lab is about. So this is the uh, basically the, the new organized, new established lab in the Protocol Labs uh, research and development. And we are working together with a network of academic and uh, collaborators from other Web3 projects on basically bringing the state of the art in consensus and scalability research to Filecoin and IPFS, but not only Filecoin and IPFS, but the goal is to impact the entire uh, Web3 ecosystem. So uh, essentially, consensus is the bottleneck, if you want, of all decentralized systems. So we know from uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin has is limited to seven transactions per second and Ethereum to 15 transactions per second. And the point here is not, uh, depends on your goals, right? So uh, con choosing the right consensus protocol is important depending on your use case, but any consensus protocol that you choose. So, you know, even if you come with a less secure protocol than proof of work, but which scales better, it's going to still be limited with a single uh, machine, single validator specification. Because if you're running a consensus protocol, this means that you're ordering transactions and then you're doing with transactions on each and every machine you're doing something like the same thing on each and every machine uh, so whatever is your consensus protocol depending on your what is your use case you're like regardless of that you're going to be limited by the performance of a single machine and then as we are moving towards decentralized internet uh, from pure uh, let's say simple transaction processing that Bitcoin has, right? So Ethereum had virtual, has virtual, has smart contracts and uh, we in Filecoin, we store large uh, amounts of data. And the goal here is really to come up uh, uh, with decentralized internet use cases. So we need to basically support the uh, execution of arbitrary programs over the blockchain. So in that case, even if you use consensus protocol to order transactions, what you're doing uh, later with them is really important. So. Uh, currently, smart contracts supporting uh, blockchains, they execute sequentially all uh, transactions after ordering, and that's going to be your, another bottleneck in your system, right? Uh, so if you're not uh, able to essentially remove the scalability bottleneck in the execution, uh, you're going to face problems regardless of your consensus protocol. Uh, so what are the essentially the scalability goals for Filecoin? So when I joined the uh, protocol labs and when we when i was thinking like before i essentially established consensus lab i was thinking okay let's let's take the best consensus protocol there is let's put it in file coin problem solved but then juan uh, juan basically came with this uh, really really nice uh, requirements which is let's get all the the entire web 2 workloads to web 3 and this is the basically the setting in which we are working so this is our running use case which is extremely ambitious and but it also tells you something like it drives uh, design of uh, consensus scaling in certain directions. So I won't read out all the requirements that you see on this slide, but basically you shouldn't sacrifice like the, la the latency for in certain use cases should be very, very small, which is completely uh, opposite from what you want in throughput, which should scale to, you know, the billions or, or trillions transactions per second, but you should get as much as security as you as you can. So, for example, as we see today uh, with Bitcoin proof of work, the fact that it uses more power than, I don't know, Poland, which just means that Poland, you know, if it engages all the power available to them, it's not able to attack Bitcoin. So we should be leveraging this security, right? So we should like... I'm really not against Bitcoin spending a lot of energy, but we shouldn't be spending yet more energy, you know, compared to Bitcoin, but we should kind of understand how to use such a secure network to secure Filecoin. As you will see, uh, because scalability involves trade-offs uh, when it comes to security and decentralization, this is one of the uh, design uh, approaches that we are taking here. So for example, leveraging security of other networks, uh, notably Bitcoin. Uh, so how do we get to these uh, bringing web to world workloads to web three? So one uh, thing is that what I just mentioned. So you're not going to be able to run uh, basically because of a single machine uh, scalability limits. You're not going to be running a single blockchain 
that basically runs the same code on all machines. So that's not going to fly. So what we are imagining is a, a hierarchical consensus approach where you see here in green, basically the green line here should you should you could think of it as, as the current Filecoin main chain. And we can maybe down the road change the consensus protocol there to scale even better. But even if you, if you keep current Filecoin expected consensus, how we are going to actually do the check, do, do, the, do the scalability is by sharding, but not in a classical way, but by establishing hierarchies of consensus protocols. So essentially when we spawn here in this picture, blue and later yellow shards, they are going to leverage uh, the security of the basically their parent uh, shards. And you see the checkpointing here shard, which is an external one. And I will talk a bit more about this. Here we plan to uh, use uh, the blockchain, basically the consensus protocols with even more security, such as Bitcoin's proof of work, to, to essentially increase the security of the Filecoin network. Of course, when you move to from a single shard to multi-shard space, you have uh, the, the main challenge is, of course, the security of individual shards, but also what do you do with cross-shard uh, transaction semantics? So this is one of the things we're looking at. And uh, consensus, basically, the second pillar of the problems that uh, we're looking at in Consensus Lab is, okay, what do you do now within a, within a specific shard? So that depends, basically, in, in, a, in a shard, you will have a different number of nodes, depending on whether this is a Filecoin May chain, which, which currently has like 3.5, last time I checked for Phil Fox, I saw 3.5 thousand miners, and this will increase over the time. But uh, you can imagine that in the child shards, we will have less and less nodes. Uh, and this will allow us to actually put uh, very efficient protocols in these child shards. Uh, and finally, this is uh, extending basically what Raul was uh, talking today on Filecoin VM, but basically it, uh, it also relates to what I said two slides ago. If you have this scalable sharding solution and if you have really, really efficient consensus protocols inside the shard, it still doesn't mean much if you're going to be bottlenecked by uh, by sequential execution. So what we're looking at the, at the consensus uh, lab is essentially we are interfacing uh, with Filecoin VM team, uh, where they're of course uh, bringing the Filecoin VM uh, and supporting uh, WASM and EVM on top of WASM and whatever I was talking about today to basically parallelize this computation. So this 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 is one of the tasks that we're looking into in consensus lab. So I would say if FVM team is looking into uh, to certain extent in this third pillar, we are also collaborating with them on that. And uh, our focus is uh, basically on these two pillars, consensus hierarchies and consensus proper. So this is the focus of the of this newly formed team. But how do we do that? I mean, many teams are looking into this. And uh, of course, uh, it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, of course, we are going to scale and share the file point, but how do you do that? I mean, as we know, the key problem when you do scaling and sharding is that you start losing security and decentralization. So this is the this is the thing, right? So it's uh, by now we have since Bitcoin like, uh, well, 12 years of research. And we still like, if we have a consensus protocol such as proof of stake, uh, yes, it has better performance than uh, proof of work, but you're sacrificing a lot of security properties, right? So one of the challenges, and I will illustrate this on a, on a very simple variant of proof of stake, but it also applies to proof of space based protocols such as Filecoin expected consensus, is uh, this notion of uh, like there are a bunch of attacks, but I will try to explain quickly uh, the long range of uh, family of attacks. And uh, basically, if you imagine that uh, in, in this picture now, in the configuration, in the initial configuration, you see the arrows one and two in which client talks to uh, consensus configuration, which is con consists of validators A, B, C, and D. And then they transfer some stakes. So for example, B and C, they transfer their stake to E and F. This is arrow three. And the N arrow four, a and D transfer their stake to G and H, right? And now you see that this com this completely changes the configuration of, uh, of of proof of stake system or just any Byzantine fault tolerance system. I have here in the picture BFT system, which stands for Byzantine fault tolerance, which is actually, actually uh, you can see it as a variant of proof of stake. Uh, if the client knows only the initial configuration, when the going to the picture down, when it starts to basically talk to the blockchain configuration consisting of A, B, C, and D, it might not know about uh, 
EFGH at all. Basically, it can be forked because the, these A, B, C, and D have no stake in the system anymore. So basically, if they keep cryptographic keys that they use to construct the blocks uh, before, and basically in, the, in any rational model, they will be able to do that, they can fork the client. So this doesn't, I mean, this is something that, uh, this is a very, very basic attack on proof of stake, which doesn't appear in proof of work, because in proof of work, you can show uh, basically the longest chain to the client, and client will immediately switch there. But here, uh, there is no way, essentially, that... Uh, E, like the right, the current configuration, EGFH, uh, can convince the client that they're the right, essentially, configuration as compared to A, B, C, and D. And this is the problem that proof of stake alone cannot solve, right? So what we are doing, and it applies also in uh, uh, to, to proof of space, right? And it could apply, in, in theory, to, to current Filecoin. Uh, what we are doing there is uh, basically what I was intuiting so far. So to prevent this kind of long-range attack and to essentially have more security in the Filecoin, in the main chain of the Filecoin network, we are working on anchoring and checkpointing uh, membership and essentially the state of the Filecoin network into the Bitcoin network. So originally this work was supposed to do this on Ethereum, but since Ethereum is changing to proof of stake, you cannot do this, right? So you actually need to because of security provided by proof of work, you need to rely on a protocol that is not subject itself to this attack, which makes us go to Bitcoin. And uh, there is an interesting upgrade that you might be aware of, which comes in November on Bitcoin, which is called Taproot, which allows uh, basically a single signature transaction, which are coming from a large population of nodes. So basically supporting Schnorr multi-sigs uh, in Bitcoin, which we are leveraging here. And then we are essentially just putting a checkpoint, which is our CID, uh, if you want, inside the Bitcoin transaction. And then we are putting, of course, uh, the CID with actual state to the Filecoin uh, uh, network to resolve it, right? Uh, that's basically checkpoint in our, so reusing other consensus protocols to actually give more security to Filecoin. But then, of course, uh, we need to shard, right? So coming to the picture that I showed previously, all these child shards are essentially going to provide like less security than the main chain, but higher performance. And they're essentially, you can think of them uh, as a variant of limited liability companies. So think of them as limited liability chains in which essentially security for a child shard is firewalled in some sense. So if there is a security violation of the child shard, it's restricted to that shard. So it doesn't affect the main chain at all. So once we start rolling this out, you know, if you are like, okay, what the, what are these guys doing? I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to, you know, endanger my, my stake, which are care for the Filecoin network. This works. I mean, you're, you're safe, but you don't need to worry about that. Only if you're explicitly, essentially, have an account on a child shard, you will be affected. And then you can profit from uh, better performance or whatever we are going to put out there. Uh, depending on how much time I have, let me just quickly check. Uh, yeah, I probably don't have too much time to go into details, but uh, uh, in this slide, we are talking about essentially details, uh, how we checkpoint into Bitcoin. I think I mentioned uh, the main principle already. So we are putting the content ID hash, which captures the entire state of the Filecoin network inside the op return opcode of a Bitcoin transaction. And the uh, address from which funds move on Bitcoin are essentially controlled by the old configuration uh, of a, you know, power table, uh, storage power table uh, of the old configuration, and we are moving to the address which is controlled by the new configuration, uh, depending on, you know, miners joining the network and so on. So this is the main principle. Of course, it will take me a lot more time to explain the, 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 the functioning here. And for sharding, I will just say one slide. So what we are, we are working on, Udico code base. So this is soon to be public and Udico is a Lotus uh, client fork, which differs from Lotus just in a sense that it has modularized consensus. So instead of uh, just expected consensus, which is kind of entangled with the other parts of, of Lotus code, we now have this modularized and currently it is going to support different consensus protocols. Currently it supports uh, like a simple consensus protocols such as proof of work and delegated consensus. Delegated consensus is where you just give to one validator uh, the ability to, to, you know, mine blocks. So this is not a real fault tolerant consensus protocol, but it serves us to 
essentially start playing and, and start prototyping on the Unicorn network. Of course, proof of work won't be there. It's just a placeholder for more efficient prot protocols that we are going to do in this consensus proper uh, pillar that I mentioned. So to do this, we are adding another uh, actor to uh, to essentially Udico, Lotus slash Udico. And this is called the shard vector, which controls spawning of the shard, joining, uh, leaving the shard, and so on. What is the plan for 2022? Just quickly. Uh, so we are at the, currently at the sh sharding uh, and checkpointing into Bitcoin POC stage. We expect first POC to be finalized by Q1 next year. And then uh, we are going to also so interface with Filecoin VM team. Uh, currently, sharding is looking only into current Filecoin networks. It's not looking into Filecoin VM. But then once Filecoin VM is ready, as Raul was uh, saying earlier today, then we are basically merging this work with Filecoin VM. And then we are continuing uh, on supporting sharding still on POC level, uh, uh, basically in Q2 and, and after that. Uh, this is, again, not an announcement of, uh, of a product feature, but we are aiming to have by the end of 2022 progressive rollout of certain uh, features and certain functionalities that I just described into Filecoin. As for consensus proper, we are you know, going to put very, very efficient scalable consensus protocol into child shards. Uh, this should be also targeting like first uh, uh, rollout should be still in 2022. And uh, yeah, I think uh, you should have listened to Raul's talk on Falcon VM, which is related to this, right? Uh, just to wrap up, uh, Consensus Lab it was just established uh, uh, in Q3. So basically three months ago I joined and we are, I'm very happy how, how fast we grow. So we have an amazing team, which currently has Sarah as a research scientist, Alfonso as a research engineer, George as our TPM. And we have two external advisors uh, just to, you know, to try to grow faster, we are relying here on external advisors who are helping us a lot with the parallel and scalable execution and hierarchical consensus. And we have another research scientist who is going to be responsible for consensus proper joining us in uh, early, basically Q1. If you have, uh, if you're you listening to this, you're yourself interested in this or you know people who might be interesting, we are hiring and uh, please contact us. Uh, I think you know how. We are also not working alone in the consensus lab, right? So one of our goals is to really leverage the entire research ecosystem around the top researchers in consensus and sharding on all the topics I mentioned. And to this end, we had a two-day conference just uh, two weeks ago, uh, where basically some of the participants who are recognized professors in the field says, okay, this is one of the easily best conferences uh, uh, research conferences in post-COVID times or who is who in our field. I just had the two quotes here from uh, renowned researchers, where we actually are trying to, you know, uh, get this larger research community interested in the problems that we are looking at, and hence have the leverage, right, to uh, to give them also incentives to look at that. And I think this is also a large set of interesting problems, and uh, basically for them to help us make Web3 scale, if you want. Uh, this is just an illustration, uh, hopefully to impress you, like uh, where this. Uh, what are the institutions from which uh, consensus days contributors came from? And these are all the institutions that we are looking to uh, collaborate uh, in one way or another in the future. Thank you so much.